So I think um, we have um, excellent treatment options for patients who are BRAF mutant. Um, this is a mutation which is being detected in roughly 40% of the melanoma patients. Um, and we are analyzing, our patients should be analyzed on a regular basis for BRAF mutations. Uh, also in stage 3 already because we have uh, treatment options in the adjuvant setting as well as in the metastatic setting. All other patients who are not showing the BRAF mutation in their tumor are called BRAF wild type. There is a substantial fraction of this BRAF wild type patients who have mutations in the MAP kinase pathway. Um, and the most pr pr uh, predominant mutation is the NRAS mutation, uh, which is there uh, to be found and to be analyzed. There have been uh, clinical activities, uh, drug development activities over the last years trying also to target NRAS as a specific uh, molecule, as a specific mutation. And uh, particularly MAC inhibitors have been tested in NRAS mutant melanoma. Uh, the most uh, favorable studies um, of um, the, the most uh, studied drug is uh, binimitinib, which has been tested in a phase two study um, and has shown activity in BRAF mutant but also NRAS mutant melanomas, um, 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 which was in the range of around four months uh, PFS. Um, which was taken forward uh, into a registrational study, which was called NEMO. Um, NEMO study compared monotherapy of binimitinib, of the MAC inhibitor, um, in comparison to DTIC, uh, alkylating uh, chemotherapy. And the primary endpoint was uh, median PFS which turned out to be uh, indeed uh, promising, hazard ratio of 0.61 in favor of the monotherapy of um, the, the MAC inhibitor. But um, the, the median time to progression was with the chemotherapy six weeks, 1.5 months, and uh, for, the, for the MAC inhibitor uh, below three months. So it was statistically significant, but clinically clinically meaningful, I mean, no way. And that actually was confirmed by the overall survival, which was completely overlapping and the hazard ratio was 1.0. So there was no difference in overall survival between the chemotherapy and the monotherapy using uh, binimitinib. So, so monotherapy obviously for NRAS mutant melanoma was not the way out. Um, there had been some studies uh, being uh, conducted using MAC inhibitor plus other targeting agents. Um, Li um, uh, 011 was one of those uh, trying to target the CTK46 um, um, uh, molecule. Uh, there was an improvement uh, in, compared, uh, in comparison to monotherapy, an improvement in median PFS uh, to more than six months, um, but the number of patients um, which are publicly available at the moment is too small. So there was a poster in 2070 at ASCO demonstrating uh, these uh, preliminary uh, phase two data and um, the larger cohort of uh, this patient cohort, uh, I'm not aware that this has been published. In, in addition, there is also some toxicity issue. So what do we do in the meantime with BRAF uh, wild type patients and NRAS mutant patients? Um, I think what we have learned in the meantime, the checkpoint blockade is acting uh, on these patients quite nicely. Uh, there is a study um, comparing nivolumab against uh, chemotherapy DTIC in the Checkmate 66 study, which was designed for BRAF wild type patients specifically. And uh, here we have seen at ASMO um, three year survival data, um, and there is a 30% benefit um, 
in survival um, using nivolumab in comparison to, to the chemotherapy and um, progression-free survival of these patients um, is still um, maintained in roughly one-third of the patients after two years and after three years. So that's actually the best options uh, we have for NRAS and BRAF wild-type patients at the moment. And the latest development, which I think is uh, very promising, is trying to bring together checkpoint blockade and targeted therapy. And we have seen uh, initial uh, phase 1b study data uh, using uh, cobimetinib and atisolizumab, which is the Roche combination, um, with a median PFS of that um, combination in the range of more than 16 months. Uh, so um, keeping in mind that the median PFS of both agents alone is in the range of five to six months, so this is definitely more than additive, uh, the effect which was seen in this small phase one trial. And this uh, has uh, now been escalated to a phase three study, uh, INSPIRE 170, which is a registration study, testing this combination of the MEC inhibitor, cobimetinib, in combination with atezolizumab, uh, in comparison to pembrolizumab as a standard of care in that. And this study is uh, recruiting one-to-one um, -one randomization, more than 600 patients, and recruitment was actually closed today, uh, has reached uh, full recruitment. And uh, so now we are waiting for the follow-up and the data uh, over the next um, uh, years. And probably that's the most promising uh, combination uh, we are going to see for this patient cohort, um, uh, hopefully, emerging as a new standard of care. Adjuvant treatment, obviously there is no trial at all specifically targeting NRAS or BRAF wild type patients. So BRAF wild type patients are included in the check checkpoint inhibitor studies, so in the NEVO study and as well as the PEMBO studies. Um, and uh, what we have seen as, at the early readout points for both studies using both drugs, that obviously there is a benefit for BRAF wild type patients as well. Um, so I think for those patients we have treatment options using checkpoint blockade also in the adjuvant setting, um, whether they are BRAF uh, mutant or not, whether they are NRAS mutant or not, uh, uh, checkpoint blockade is a viable option uh, for patients in adjuvant setting. So keeping in mind um, that roughly 15 to 20 percent of the patients carrying an NRAS mutation in melanoma um, I think um, there are probably uh, a lot of patients, yes. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you need to show a really specific benefit um, um, for these patient cohort. Uh, whether you need a specific um, a treatment option just for NRAS, mutant melanoma uh, patient, it's questionable if you have excellent treatment options for BRAF wild type patients. So if the combination of cobimetinib and atezolizumab um, turns out to be, um, you know, having really durable responses, is really prolonging median PFS times, um, I think it will be the new standard of care and there is, on the short run, uh, uh, at least no need for a, an NRAS specific uh, treatment option.